from Canada University. He has completed his PhD in Bioresource Engineering from McGill University, Canada. Right now, he is doing postdoc from the same university. Sir is instrumentation engineer with expertise in proximal soil sensing, DAQ and instrumentation system, mechatronics and automation sensor, fusion and software development. Sir has about 13 years of full-time research and 8 years of part-time teaching experience, 4 years of full-time teaching experience and along with that 6 years of industrial experience. Sir has more than 20 plus, 20 plus party publications with one patent as well. Dr. Dave Sir has awarded as Graduate Fellowship Award, Graduate Excel Fellowship Award, Graduate Excellence Award, Great Travel, Travel Award, etc. etc. Sir has done many of the certifications in Integrated Sensor System Training Program basic business skills and in PLC and HDMI programming by Anshuman Industries Training Private Limited. Also, Sir has command over MATLAB, LabView, Arduino, Python, C, C++, Java, HTML, PHP and JavaScript. Sir is active member in BioGeo Lab Canada Precision Agricultural and Sensor System Canada and other activities by University of Canada. This is just a brief introduction of Dr. Dabre sir from my side. So such a great personality is with us today to interact with us. So I welcome you sir once again from all of the members. We are very pleased to have you for the interaction. I kindly request you to start, start the session. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Professor Mane, madam, uh, for introducing me. And uh, no, there were actually many things uh, that I have achieved so far. And uh, the time is very short. So there is actually no uh, point of uh, describing uh, those uh, aspects of myself just there was a little bit of a correction so uh, i just wanted to uh, mention it myself so i'm a multidisciplinary uh, person uh, being an instrumentation engineer i was able to uh, work and apply my skills and experience in wide uh, areas of uh, engineering and sciences uh, i i have already completed my post doctoral studies uh, back in 2017 and i'm currently working as an associate professor at pvpit budgao me properly Sangli Chahi, aboriginally Sangli Chaslamura, me the Sadda Sangli Madiahi Gele Dontin Varsha, and I am uh, working uh, as a RD cell in charge for PPIT Budgao, and I also work for their IP cell. So, all the patents uh, uh, that are happening at PPIT Budgao, um, uh, I am actually like you know looking behind them as well. So, uh, apparent from that, uh, maybe I would like to start the session and uh, just excuse me because I have a little bit of a power failure uh, issue in my area and I don't know when the power will come back. So, I am on the backup of my inverter batteries, uh, which I am not sure about how long they might last. So, let me, uh, let me start. So, before I start, I would like to uh, show you a short video. So, this is actually my philosophy what you think is what you do and what you do is what you get so always keep your aspirations high and don't stop to dream big so i try to work on this philosophy in respect to uh, uh, my personal uh, uh, you know uh, reasons uh, as well as for uh, my educational or uh, you know work related reasons so this is the philosophy i work on and i would like to short you uh, would like to show you a short video that will follow this slide and please pay attention because I'm going to ask you some questions, okay? So this, this is going to be a short video in the sense it will be a long video. It will run for five minutes. But it, it, it is something that I would like to actually show you. Uh, maybe someone of you might have already seen it. So if you have seen it, please excuse me. Don't get bored. But those who have not seen it, it is actually for them. And I'm going to ask you some questions. So please stay tuned.
Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, maybe most of you might have not seen it, uh, or if you have seen it, you might have not seen it completely. So the video is from YouTube. Uh, it's called "Where is Where the Hell is Matt?" Okay. So for me to show you this video, I have actually three to four reasons. Number one reason I wanted to see, like you know, how concent how concentrated are you in attending a session? and my question is like you know so the person in this video who was common to throughout the thread was matt and I, my question is like you know how many places did he visit on our planet earth so that is my number one question and if you can answer that great uh, places in the sense like you know how many countries or how many states how many cities you can tell me anything the count and the reason to show you this video is because we are locked down so i wanted you to actually give an experience of going out of the house you know visiting a lot of places in uh, uh, on this planet earth so you can have a feel that okay uh, even if you are locked in we can still visit by sitting on our couch and the other reason is because he was dancing so every day in the morning you can actually probably probably or many times in the day you can probably watch at that video and just dance for four to five minutes so your body will get refreshed and uh, we might not get actually tired and it can be a good exercise you don't need to actually do a zumba or anything and number actually another reason is because matt is visiting many countries and today's topic is related to scad and iot and which is mostly right now depending on the www which is the uh, world wide web uh, which is connected across the globe uh, even uh, beyond the globe uh, like you know uh, it is connected to the uh, uh, space station via the satellites and another reason is because uh, the song is very uh, you know the background music was composed uh, by um, uh, like you know Mr. Rabindranath Tagore he, who was one of the Nobel laureate uh, from our country India so this was actually the main reason uh, to start with so can we actually like you know uh, get the answer so how many places did he visit 
uh, let's make this session interactive so uh, was I, was i audible were you able to watch the video were you able to listen to the music and am i audible right now did you get my actually question so can you answer that yes sir you are audible one, one uh, participant given the answer for 50 places in visited maybe maybe okay so let's actually look at the answer let's keep it you know suspense let's look at the answer at the end of the session okay so uh is there anyone who anyone else who wants to answer may may i know at least one more answer have you ever seen this video before anyone from the audience or the organizer side have you seen this video before no sir okay no no, no. okay no, no. so uh, my name is dr nand kishor dhavle and i am presenting today a guest lecture on basics of scada and iot technically it should had been i i o t like industrial internet of things but i am just going to talk about iot in general and when i mention like you know and a team because some of the parts that are actually shown in my slide are related to actually like you know my team members i have some team members who are students or who are faculties from other institutes or probably in my same institute so the ppt that i have prepared are actually are combined are combined using uh their uh, data as well so that's why i call it as a team and i'm presenting it to uh, department of electrical engineering uh, kolapur institute of technology kolapur maharashtra i am i am from pvpa tibudgao sangli okay so as mentioned i am the in charge for r&d uh, cell as well as i am the associate professor there so the topic is scada and iot both talk, both are the uh, topics which are somewhat related and scada stands for supervisory control and data acquisition uh, well iot stands for internet of things and then i iot stands for or double iot stands for industrial internet of things okay so we might be more or less interested in this topic now me i am from an instrumentation engineering background so this is these are actually like you know the core subjects for us the iot given it is a bit a new newer concept but it kind of relies on the same uh, concept which is scada so here on this slide i just want to show you uh, sorry for the slide to make it uh, so messy there is so much data which is probably blur on your side if you are observing it on a phone maybe it might not be visible if you are actually on a pc or a laptop it might be visible but this slide what it illustrates is it just illustrates the syllabus like you know so we PVPIT Budgaon are affiliated to D Batu Dr Baba Saheb Ambedkar Technological University and under that like you know I am just illustrating the syllabus for the instrumentation or the electrical department so in that you know there was a subject related to industrial automation in that we have one chapter which is major processes applications of scada you know so so it was related to scada and we also had a lab and out of those uh, 13 labs the lab number 9 to 13 were related to scada so this is something already in the syllabus uh, you know for d part 2 and the other topic is internet of things so internet of things is also like you know uh, it is kind of like a, uh, uh, it is not a compulsory subject it can be opted for or it can be uh, you know exempted for so this subject is iot and that also is included in our curriculum and we have like you know around five chapters uh, starting from introduction to internet of things to iot physical server and cloud offerings okay so this is uh, you know already there in the syllabus and if you look at the syllabus there are so many actually topics listed under it and we are actually going to only uh, try to cover uh, few like you know uh, very few uh, since we are uh, doing an fdp and we are only having uh, maximum 3 hours uh, uh, like today's 1 and 1/2 hour and tomorrow's 1 and 1/2 hour so i might actually try to uh, show you or teach you as much as possible from my side and then rest we can again discuss uh, sometime again in future okay so what is scada so scada as it mentions or as i have mentioned earlier scada stands for supervisory control and data acquisition right am i audible i just wanted to hear from the audience am i audible 
Okay. Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. So now I'm just going to go to some process. Like you know, so SCADA and instrumentation is more or less related to something uh, process. So here in on this slide, I have four pictures. Uh, I would call them like you know, left top, left bottom, right top, right bottom. So in my left uh, top picture, there is one process. The process is looking like a tank having some fluid, let's say water. On the right side, there is a valve. On the left side. there is a pressure gauge and there is a pump connected to some motor three phase motor I, sh i i think so and that is connected to some switch okay to some to some switch box as well as there is uh, like you know inlet like you know some it is pumping something from inlet to the outlet which is the tank right and then in that picture what we are seeing there are three people needed to control that system and because there is a moon so it means a day and night right so moon sometimes is available in the day and sometimes also in the night so day and night so day and night you need three people one to control the valve one to look at the pressure and one to actually turn on or turn off the motor okay so three people this is manual control what the job of the three people is the person the person uh, who is going to turn on the motor he will depend on the person who is going to look at the psi of the gauge and who is going to look at who is going to control the valve the the person who is going to look at the psi gauge will will tell the person to release the valve or to uh, or to close the valve at the same time he will also tell the person to turn on the motor or to turn off the motor the motor is basically driving the pump right so this is manual control this is a very uh, this is a very uh, straight forward uh, process Uh, we live in cities or metros or towns and we all all of us have the water system every day or once in a while the water actually runs from our taps and those water that is actually running from from our taps are coming from some tank and that tanks which are actually installed at some uh, high altitude locations uh, within our uh, region uh, are pumped with the water that is actually coming from the water filtration plants so this is like you know a common process right so you don't you don't need to really go to an industry to see this kind of a scenario right this is a common scenario and it is manually controlled right so it needs three people right so the same process can be you know can be implemented without human right or maybe with instead of using three human maybe it can be implemented using one human and that is actually illustrated using the picture that stays in the left bottom right so here we see what we see we see a vincc vincc is a is a software uh from siemens it is basically a software a scada scada and hmi software it is a proprietary software that runs on a normal pc okay it is like an os like you know windows os or linux os plus it has the a uh, specific actually like you know the software applications that are essential for data acquisition control and that is connected to some server and that server server is networked again to some field control devices which has human machine interfaces like hmis and those field control devices are basically connected to the actuators and the sensors which are hooked up to the process right so on one side you can see it is connected or hooked up to the same uh, water uh, you know pumping uh, process on the other side you can see that it is hooked up to some conveyor system which has a sensor like a camera and it has a some other sensor like a rfid reader and that is again connected to the field control devices right so in scada and then on the right side you know whatever data is collected from the process using the sensors that can be acquired and visualized by the field devices and they can transmitted to the vincc system through a specified network and then from the vincc or the hmis which are local hmis as well as network hmis they can be used to visualize the process parameters and they can be used to control in case if we want to turn on the motor turn off the motor turn on the motor of the conveyor 
turn off the motor of the conveyor turn off the motor of the pump you know open the valve after the like you know the tank and all these kind of things right and at the same time we can also visualize the data in terms of a chart in terms of a digital numeric values in terms of a gauge or any other way that we would like to see the data in the form right so this is in general scada supervisory control and data acquisition now there are so many examples that uh, you might have already went through through your life cycle until today so but this is in general what is scada okay is it clear and now i wanted to go back to the video so the the video it was actually illustrating that mat was like everywhere so the process can be controlled from anywhere if even if he was in spain and if he had some process going on in india let's say in kolhapur in kit your college he can still control that you know from his screen from his hmi or from his some kind of a terminal and that is actually the beauty of scada okay it is it is a vast field it has a lot of applications all over the place uh, just not in industry but also in consumer and uh, you know domestic market okay so is it clear what is scada so basic you know the basic thing about scada is it clear should i go to the next slide okay so now before yeah, we move, yeah before we move ahead i was very interested i have always been interested to look, look into the history to look into the history you know about the technology so if some technology which which we are enjoying today or which we are using today so who who was the one who kind of started that technology or when was the year back that that technology kind of you know started what was the parent technology or what is what are the different actually children's that it actually had in future and what are the what were the states what were the advantages what were the disadvantages and where are we right now in terms of that technology right so scada the term scada something like you know it actually started in 1950s and it was more or less used in oil and petroleum and factories and it was only locally means right now what we see that you know scada the system can be controlled from anywhere across the globe in 1950 no it was not possible it was only possible in the local area okay so 1950 the application was only related to oil and petroleum and factories factories also like you know uh, local factories then with the revolution in the satellite technology a lot of satellites you know they were actually launched in the space and because of that satellite technology it was possible to send a data you know it was possible to transmit data and it could actually be used to control and acquire data from remote locations so because of that satellite technology advancement in satellite technology in 1960s the scada started to pick up and it started to actually find its applications in more uh, industries and with the invention or with the uh, development of technologies such as plc's and microprocessors like around 1970s then the control which was possible you know could be actually achieved even more using the scada systems but still it was you know with the stand alone units it had a lot of applications like you know in automobile industry in petrochemical actually process industries in different actually manufacturing industries but it was only able to handle things in a local okay so it could not be used for uh, uh for places which were separated by different geographical coordinates okay so eventually with the revolution uh, of actually like you know small uh, semiconductor technologies the computers uh, sizes actually reduced the networking actually uh, uh, technologies were developed or evolved such as local area network uh, there were actually many developments in the software side such as human machine interfacing softwares and then they were actually like you know there was a possibility to connect the hmi uh, to the mini computers to the field actually using the lan the network local area we are not talking about the wide area still okay just the local area but the problem was they were proprietary means let's say a company like allen bradley or a company like abb if they had a field device okay i'm going to talk to the main 
basic components of uh, SCADA eventually. But let's say a company, if they had a PLC and if they had a, some kind of a proprietary software, uh, something ABB uh, SCADA and whatever they were uh, using as a hardware that was proprietary means the Allen Bradley cannot be connected with Siemens, Siemens cannot be connected with uh, uh, with Honeywell, Honeywell cannot be connected with uh, uh, any other uh, uh, technologies like right now what we see Delta and you know so it was it was not open source it was basically proprietary so the systems actually the systems existed and but uh, it was not widely accepted means it was because it was very proprietary so you have to stick to one and depending on the cost if it is affordable or not uh, the companies the industry man would actually like you know uh, accept it adapt it or not right so that was the situation but then since between 90s and 2000s they started adapting with open source uh, or open system architecture for communication protocols and they were not de dependent on the vendor specific networks and those kind of systems started to emerge in the market means you can buy a plc from allen bradley you can buy a scada software from some other vendor you can buy a hardware network connect, connecting communication network from some third party let's say cisco and you can connect them all together and still that system would be able to be used so that was actually the uh, most uh, breakthrough actually like you know uh, uh, stage of this uh, you know scada related uh, technology and it was kind of widely accepted but again that it kind of started to get outdated very quickly now what happened from 2000s till today because of because of so much advancements in IT industry in computer uh, you know hardware in semiconductor industry so in the database like you know how the data should be stored how the data should be distributed how the data can be secured so all of those different technologies and all those standards so basically IT information technology started to drive the most technologies that were actually SCADA uh, to be dependent on and because of that SCADA as a SCADA kind of died quickly and now what we are in a world where we, co we can call it as SCADA but it can be like you know anything that can work as a web based application or it can be like a standalone application and it can be connected across the globe using the open network system and that is now that's why we are actually into this IOT or double IOT so SCADA to double IOT all of this is actually like you know interconnected and interrelated and the you know we are in 2021 right now so by 2020 22 23 up to 2030 we don't know what is the fit okay so it is continuously going to keep on evolving and it is going to keep on finding its applications just not in industry but also in domestic products for example you me as a human in our house we actually have some applications through which we can control the tube light the fan or many other things right so this is possible because of the cloud technology like you know in the last 10 years like the cloud computing and the cloud technology was also more or less you know important for this to be getting adapted okay also there is a lot of issues related to uh, uh, these there are a lot of issues related to uh, security data security right so there is actually security uh, information security systems uh, that those also are actually kind of interlinked to these technologies these days and then there is also like you know coming like you know blockchain technologies like you know the security of the data using blockchain technologies and those are also going to be part of this uh, system eventually right so i don't i'm i i'm not going to go into the cloud uh, you know into the cloud concepts uh, so far but i'm just going to uh, stop here so we will actually go up to here right so in terms of uh, in terms of scada in general so now essentially scada is a collection of hardware 
and software components that can you know collect data in real time from the plant floor devices and are sent to field processors such as the PLCs and the data is distributed to the system of the network of devices such as HMIs, end user computers or servers on end user computers or HMI graphical representation of the operation exists for operator interactions such as running pumps or opening walls or running or stopping the conveyor motors the data can also be analyzed to improve plant production and troubleshooting problems using the different layers such as data analytics and cloud computing okay so this is actually so the picture here we can see you know so the vincc is the is the like you know the mother system like this is vincc is from siemens uh, don't take me wrong i'm showing you siemens it could be something different different as well from honeywell or from some any other vendor so here system uh, software runs on a dedicated machine okay it has a database connection with a database typically sql that can be connected to a server that server can be connected to the network via the you know the wi-fi or probably lan depending on uh, whatever uh, you want to actually call it and then that can be again connected to the field control devices so we here we call them as a field processors these are dedicated professor pro, uh, processors which are having control of the actuator and you know to acquire the data coming from the sensors and they can also hooked up to the hmis their own actually like you know field hmis and the users can interact with these you know remotely or also directly um, in the plant itself right so this is all about scada and what you can really like you know enjoy about scada is you can see the process on the screen means the process that is happening somewhere remotely because we are hooking up the signal uh, coming from the sensor and the actuators to some field processors which are actually going to link to, to some virtual process diagrams and they are actually linked to the positions and they are programmed in such a way that the signals can represent some colors some growing colors some like 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 let's say tank like a filling tank or like a on or off actually the valve or the motor or the pump and all that that can happen on the screen right instantaneously like you know in real time and the user can monitor that and if there is actually some kind of an emergency that needs to be taken care then they can also control that from that screen itself okay there are many different strategies uh, uh, you know we don't want to go in too much detail right now but this is in general what is SCADA okay this is in general what is SCADA okay now when we talk about SCADA now from SCADA we are going to enter into IOT double IOT okay I'm not going to talk too much about double IOT I'm just going to talk about IOT now we are going into IOT because today's topic is basics of basics of SCADA and IOT so I'm just going to go and IOT means internet of things so internet is the technology it is the mother technology right now and first we want to see how that internet is networked you know how that internet is networked how we are communicating how we are going to communicate from the field to the remote uh, control station you know via the internet technology so the internet technology consists of two boxes one is LAN and one is WAN LAN is local area network and WAN is wide area network LAN consists of three technologies one is the IP protocol or the IP you know addressing uh, manner number two is the switch and number three is the subnet and WAN consists of firewall demilitarized zone port forwarding and network uh, you know conversion technique uh, ad network address uh, converting technique okay because you don't want to actually show your actual address so you actually mask it with some other number 
so that it is never visible for security reasons okay so lan and wan is the technology which everyone should understand first because everything is going to be connected or networked using the internet eventually now it can be wired it can be wireless there are different protocols there are a lot many protocols uh, we are not going to go in too much depth but let's just try to understand first this the lan and the wan okay so lan is something local area network let's let me give an example so let's say let's say you have a college like you know we have, we all have a college and computer one is like you know student one and computer two is like student two and printer is like student three student one is from like you know first year student two is from third year student uh, three is from like let's say final year so each student they have an uh, they have an id and depending on their year they have a roll number and id okay so then this switch is like an office boy it's like a peon so some student if he wants to communicate with some student from another class first what he can do he can go and find uh, the peon and he will tell him that okay i want to send this message to that student who's this roll number from that class okay so that way they are actually interconnected with each other the office boy or the switch is actually responsible to send the message from source to the destination okay depending on the source address and the destination address that is specified so that is your local area network the sub net range is like you know because this local area network is addressed using uh, ipv4 uh, you know protocol which is actually 128 bits and you know each bit is separated by this dot so 192.168.25.30 okay so these are actually the separators so when we say that you know the sub net range is 255.255 means any device that is connected with a fixed 192.168 point anything 000 0.0 to 255.255 so that much that one that much is the big range so you can connect as many as devices within that range and then each device will have its own uh, you know local uh, ip uh, address so this is a logical address okay so 192.168.10.20 is the local uh, uh physical address it is the logical address of computer one now let's say we are actually we are in kit and now i want to actually reach to someone from pvpid let's say i'm from pvpid right so how are you going to actually reach me so for or let's say i am from pvpid and i want to go and meet someone from kit as a person so what is my uh, duty i will go from pvpit uh, maybe i will have a security guard at pvpit i will go and meet the security guard from pvpit i will tell them that okay this is the office hours i have to go and go to kolapur and i have to meet this actually uh, student number like let's say something 7 and uh, i have to go and talk to him i have to get some message to him i have to tell some message to him and then i will come back okay so i want to connect but to connect i have to go through the security i might have to go through the security of my college i might have to go through the security of your kit college okay so now when i go to the security uh, um, i meet the security so there might be some protocols of your institute so if someone is coming and meeting there are maybe there is maybe some uh, you know way demilitarized zone means what they will do they will actually like you know bring me to some place where i go and sit it is a secure place and then they will actually uh, bring the person whom I want to meet and they will come and meet me there and then we will talk and then we can again go ahead So this is something like a strategy. It is a demilitarized, uh, you know uh, space So that is actually like you know programmed in the router in the gateway in the security system There is actually a for uh, that is actually a firewall So firewall is for protection if someone from outside wants to connect with someone from inside then they cannot directly you know connect they can only connect through some protocol which can be a set of rules which are already existing or there might be some other ways so the other way is port forwarding port forwarding is something like you know if you want to actually visit the www website so always there is a port number 80 so by default when i actually type www.kit.coe.in then it will go through that port 40 so that is very straightforward it is already programmed in the firewall 
uh, you know uh, firmware of that router so nat is like you know when when we are connecting to the external world i want to go to now the wan area so the external world you can see like you know external world is computer a computer i computer c computer t computer e so these external world computers are www let's say there is something called as 62.13.29.50 the other one can be 44.5.5.1 right so these are the addresses but on my local network what i had i had something 192.168 right so my network address is converted eventually so it is hidden i don't need to actually expose my network address so that that's how it works by uh, by default and that is taken care by the network uh, gateway the security system hello yes did someone say something was i audible okay yes you are audible you are audible uh, because some yes. some sometimes my mic my speaker is beeping so i'm i'm confused if someone is saying something or is it beeping i don't know why uh so the next part is like you know so as i said uh web browser has a default port 80 tomcat server which is apache server has a port uh, 8080 oracle database if you want to connect with that it has a default port uh 1521 and these ports can be set like you know if you go to our browser settings then those browsers are actually going to have uh, all of these uh, uh features which you can actually set right so when we are actually here talking about scada now because scada can be like a web application or scada can be like a you know even a uh, stand alone application so but when it is actually going to be like a web application it can be like on a phone it can be on our phone mobile phone or it can be running on a pc or any any other actually system so when it is going to be a web application it has to go through this right otherwise otherwise there will be a problem right so that's why i wanted to mention this now this is not always the case because there are some for iot there are different protocols you this is actually something tcp ip right you know tcp ip protocol but there is a mqtt protocol as well so we can go with the mqtt protocol which is something different and uh, that i will probably try to uh, mention to you tomorrow okay so is it clear what is actually networking right because we saw that scada has some communication actually uh, related technologies and this lan and wan is very essential okay uh, well they actually have different networking strategies like profi bus mod bus but basically right now everything is going to go on ethernet right so this is something related to ethernet okay i i am not going in too much depth but this is at least you need to understand okay so then the other technology as i said ethernet ethernet instead of ethernet we can have a wireless actually like you know network so wireless sensor network this is something also interested so if you look at the wireless sensor network in general the picture so wireless sensors you know there are satellites that are actually uh, laying in the you know the uh, in the space so this these satellites can communicate with the you know the isl like inter satellite link which is actually wireless link then these satellites actually they can send the signals to satellite ground stations these satellite ground stations can also communicate with the cellular network with the base stations and these can also communicate with the internet actually you know through the gateways so a remote requester can request something through the satellite can request something through the cellular network and can also request something through the internet you know link and you know the field devices the field devices the field processes what we call those are actually the sensing nodes so this is like you know something like a you know a sensing node there can be many this can be like you know on this side in the left uh, uh, left bottom corner let's say you have a industry uh let's say something like a sugar factory and there are many actually like you know processes that are happening and in those processes there are many sensors which can communicate with each other as well as they will actually able to communicate with some remote requester and all of these will actually send some data to a sync node that can go through the gateway to the internet to the requester or it can also go to some other sync node which is actually connected remotely it can connect through the cellular network or it can also connect through the satellite actually network okay so this is this is the main uh, essence you know so the scada right now the scada is something like you know 
uh, what we see in the sync node beyond the sync node what we have is like you know we have the dedicated sensors so from that level to the remote requester you know the person or the system the remote requester can be a human or it also can be a system or this can be connected to another uh, you know field processing sensors so these are all things you know internet of things means thing to thing let's say this one is a fridge in my home and here there is a fridge and maybe like you know professor uh, uh, Mane Madam's actually home so the, f the, the fridge in my home is trying to connect with the fridge in Mane Madam's home and the fridge in my home has different sensors like it can actually monitor what is the temperature what is the humidity how much are the actually like you know in, uh, contents uh, filled in my fridge if there is any tomato if it is going bad if there is actually milk if it is actually like you know uh, going to the bottom level then it will communicate you know to the other fridge like what is the status in your actually fridge and that can also communicate to some grocery uh, vendor so he will know that okay this person's fridge is getting empty so we have to deliver him milk we have to deliver him uh, you know uh, tomatoes we have to deliver him something because they need it right now and before that is going to connect it will first connect with the lock so let's say we have a house and our house is actually like you know locked because we are not staying in our house right now maybe we went outside maybe we went to office maybe we went for a vacation so that fridge will first communicate with the lock of the house and the lock will tell okay now actually i am closed means there is no one in the house so if so that that flag should also be sent because if the grocer will, grocer delivery will come then there will be no one in home right so is the lock open okay good then the grocer eat delivery can actually come because the lock is open in it means that maybe there is someone in the home so this is actually something from industry to actually like you know consumer market but this is this is the technology this is the technology so wireless sensing nodes wireless sensor networks are highly distributed of small lightweight wireless nodes so this one in the cloud i was like you know trying to show you these are the wireless nodes okay the sensor nodes are distributed in various geographical dispersed areas means these can be anywhere dispersed in any like you know geographical area the sync node is used to collect data from different sensor nodes so all of these are interconnected as well as there will be like you know some like a master to which they are connected and that master will actually be responsible for communicating with the higher level uh, uh, you know uh, protocols so that is something you know very important and then each and every node is the sensor network consists of three subsystems number one is sensor subsystem number two is processing subsystem and number three is communication sus subsystem so the sensor subsystem it, it its job is to sense the environment to sense the parameters or the variables that are actually in that environment then it can also perform some local computation on the sense data maybe like you know taking the average like you know applying some filters like you know because the raw data is sometimes not good maybe it needs to actually like you know uh, make it into some structure before sending it like you know some in a table format or something like you know if you're using python programming then maybe it can be like you know sent as a tuple sent as a list or whatever so that you know data formatting before it is go so that can be done by the local actually computation uh, uh, system and then eventually it will actually communicate with the other uh, systems and it will exchange the messages or it can exchange the data so this is this is actually all about the wireless sensor network and the wireless sensing node so there are actually different uh, systems that were uh, uh, existing uh, so far this is not a new technology this has been a very old one since at least last uh, uh, so many years but at least last 15 years so the sensor node also known as the moat it is also called as a moat is a node in a sensor network that is capable of gathering sensory information performing some processing and communicating with other connected nodes in the network okay so this is the wireless sensor network then it goes to the cloud or the internet and then it can be actually accessed by the users so in default the architecture it has a power unit it has a sensor it has a adc it has some processor it can also store some uh, data it can uh, you know transmit that data so it can also like you know have something related to position like gps 
so it knows the location of about itself and it can also be a mobilizer means it can also travel okay so obviously all of this will need power so you need to have a source of power okay so this is something like a board you know which actually has double a batteries for power it has a switch to turn it off and on it has external power connector uh, means uh, if you have external source you can always connect it it has some processor it has some antenna because it is going to communicate using the wireless network and then it has you know something like you know to connect a uh, rf connector like you know if you want to have a uh, uh, if this device is sitting inside a house or inside some place where there is actually uh, signal strength is very weak then you can also have an external antenna that you actually hook up uh, by a cable and uh, then you can also have an expansion connector means this can be expanded to uh, to more than one okay so this is something interesting there are there were actually some systems like you know from crossbow like the mica series the dust modes the IM modes, the Telo modes, the mass modes, the particle modes and all of them are actually like you know there are different uh, uh, protocols and different actually technologies uh, for example if there is a mesh network you know how the network is so if there is a mesh network then we can go with Zigbee so this is something like a radiation sensor board so this is a uh, sensing uh, mode that kind of is placed in a place where there is a lot of uh, nuclear radiation and that nuclear radiations can be measured using the Geiger tube then it can be interfaced with some uh, board that actually is based on Zigbee radio and uh, it can also have a GPS or a GPRS to know where the position is and then that also needs a battery power so that that can be sent you know to the cloud right so from the sensing node it can be sent through the network to the remote actually user so or it can be used sent to the cloud for data storage or for uh, data archiving whatever you want to have so this is the communication media right so th these are the sequence diagrams like you know how how the uh, moat is actually connecting to the cloud you know so for that you also need to have like you know some security so because some like let's say I want to actually speak to Professor Mane Madam and uh, instead of that I actually dial my number and it gets connected to probably the uh, director of KIT uh, so that will be like a wrong actually connection right so I I may I need to make sure that when I'm connecting I, I am going to connect with the exact actually destination so the source and destination they have to be you know always actually talking to themselves and they should not cross talk to anyone else so the security is the most important aspect here and that has to be taken care and now this is actually again going to be taken care with the internet right so this WSN network is a wireless network so the wireless they have their own protocol to communicate with each other but then the sync node is going to communicate to the other network via the internet so that is again another layer of the security so there are two levels of security one is actually for the wireless sensor network and one is with the with the uh, internet right so then the third part is the gateway because when we are going to go uh, beyond our uh, LAN network we have to go through the gateway the gateway is nothing but the router I just mentioned to you before so router is a miniature PC it has a input connection with internet it can have multiple radios okay it can have different frequencies at which it can communicate with the local devices and uh, it can be based on like you know embedded Linux or even embedded C uh, uh, you know so depending on what processors are actually being used to develop the gateways right so that is that is the technology and another last technology is the GPS because as I mentioned that each and every sensing node or if each and every sensing node that is going to communicate with the uh, with the end user through the network it also should be able to send its position the position in the sense like you know where it is in the geographical setup like what is the latitude what is the longitude and what is the altitude of the source node who is trying to send some information to the sync node or to the uh, you know to the end user so in India for example like GPS is GPS is called global positioning system though though we all know that GPS like you know GPS we call it as GPS but GPS is not the uh, parent technology the parent technology is called as global global uh, navigation satellite system GNSS okay in US it is called as GPS 
in russia it is called as glonass in europe it is called as galileo in india now we are actually having this own indian regional navigation satellite system called as navic okay so the indian regional navigation satellite system which is also short form abbreviated as IN, irnss with an operational name as navic is an autonomous regional satellite navigation system that provides accurate real time positioning and timing services okay so it covers india and a region extending 1500 kilometers around it with plans for further extension an extended service area lies between the primary service area means within the map of india and a rectangle area enclosed by the 30th parallel south means to the south the 30th parallel line to the 50th parallel north to the 30th meridian east okay so 30th means there is actually first meridian when we call it utm the time the time where because india is like 5 hours 30 minutes from where from the prime meridian okay we are we are 5 and uh, 5 and uh, 5 and uh, half hours east to the or five and a half hours away from the prime meridian so there is the prime meridian means one meridian two meridian three four like the 30 so this region is extended up to the 30th meridian from the east to the 130th meridian east right because we are in india is in the east from the utm we are in the east the us and canada are to the west right so you have to understand that as well so in general we are like you know 1500 to 60 6000 kilometer beyond the borders okay the system currently consists of a constellation of seven satellites there are seven satellites out of them uh, uh, plus there are two actually ground satellites you know which are at standby so total there are nine the system is intended to provide an absolute position accuracy of better than 10 meters throughout the indian landmass the space application center in 2017 this is older data said navic will provide standard positioning service to all users with a position accuracy up to five meter if you take a gps right now standard gps in our phone uh, we can actually see that the, if if the all satellites are visible that are like you know the minimum number that is uh, required then the accuracy can be around five meter means the position where i am can be like you know here or there five meters right so in a five meter radius circle so the indian system is also supposed to actually give that accuracy that was mentioned in 2017 i don't know the state as of now the gps for comparison had an accuracy of 20 to 30 in india like you know because we are depending on the gps the satellites that are actually part of the us government we are using that satellite but then the accuracy is a problem we don't actually get the correct accuracy if we actually register with uh, navic then probably we might get a good accuracy if they have actually uh, improved it like you know the technology if it is actually like you know improved so who actually takes care of the accuracy is ux us banks of atmospheric model to assess frequency error and it has to update this model from time to time to assess the exact error in india's case the actual delay is assessed by measuring the difference in the delay of, so that is actually about the you know the technology that is used in the gps the gps receiving antenna communicates with the satellites and there are two different bands the s band and the l band so the different frequencies and when they communicate then they actually know the time of communication and because they know the time then from no know, from knowing the time you know the speed and you know the you know the speed of the signal then you can actually calculate the distance and you calculate your distance uh, in in a triangle at least with three satellites and that's how you know the position because the satellites they know their own position always in time so that is actually the technology that is actually used so so there are many applications like you know terrestrial aerial marine applications disaster management like for example right now also uh, there was a big uh, cyclone that happened in western uh, eastern part uh, western part of western coast of maharashtra and uh, some parts of Karnataka as well so disaster management if it can be used like you know uh, to track the weather uh, locations exactly on the map or uh, if uh, if we exactly know actually what are the implications of that disaster then if we can actually send some aid uh, you know to uh, to mitigate the, um, uh, the the issues right uh, to to save the people and stuff so vehicle tracking fleet management integration with mobile phones Precise timing, mapping, geo geodetic data capture, terrestrial navigation aids for hikers and travelers, visual and voice navigation for travel. So all of this and all of this is now like you know part of SCADA and part of actually IoT. 
because you can see things like you know happening in real time like even if you have for example the fleet management vehicle tracking system if the transportation industry they are adapting this and they can see their vehicle where it is in terms of actually transportation at the time and they can see it on the screen or the gps itself is like a scada so the zo the the zomato guy the zomato guy or the pizza delivery guy when he's actually uh, you know when we placed an order already he's going to deliver his order and we can see where his vehicle is exactly on the map right so that is a scada exactly it is telling about the location of that delivery guy you know uh, if he has picked up our actually order and if he's actually going to deliver it and how how long it's going to take for delivery of that so this is scada nothing but this is scada this is a kind of an application of scada like you know a commercial application of scada uh, a domestic application of scada and that is all based on iot and that is all based on this uh, networking technology and that is all based on like you know it is it is a it is actually kind of a complex right so i think how much time i have can i just take one minute break and uh, you know just get a feedback so i think i'm done one hour so i still have 30 minutes right uh, are you there Yes, yeah, so I think I'm. Uh, I I took one hour uh, to to reach here, and I still have less than thirty minutes. Okay, and uh, can I just take a take a one minute break and you know just drink some water and come back? Okay, I was done drinking water. I'm back, and uh, so, so, just chill, just relax. I know you people are from electrical engineering, and maybe this is not something really uh, that you are, or you might be interested in. But still, try to understand. You might be interested in it as well because every each and every uh, system that I'm discussing or talking about needs power. it needs power it either needs direct power or it needs actually like you know power in the form of battery or it needs power in any other form that can be like you know from renewable energy sources it could be like you know in the form of solar power in terms of wind power i'm going to talk to you about those tomorrow i'm going to show you some examples and plus they also need like you know they need optimized power systems means these devices they will consume power and if they are actually consuming power from batteries then those batteries they have to last long you know the the system should not fail you know they should not be uh, they should not go off uh, before their uh, uh, prescribed life uh, span so if each and every needs a power so as an electrical engineers you people you are the fundamental you know because without power these systems cannot work you know you take a system and you don't give power no use that thing we call it as a thing that thing is useless right so electrical power is very important right now in my home i don't have electrical power i am going on my battery that's why i was able to you know go through this lecture right now i uh, we had scheduled this lecture so many days before and i was fully prepared for this but today since 2 hours i was struggling again to set up my system to adapt for my uh, you know inverter based power system and one of my laptop failed it actually was not able to connect so i actually i borrowed another laptop from from one of my friend and i got his phone and then i got his data because the sim that i have doesn't have a good coverage where i live i tried to go to the college but in the college also there is no power and because of the shutdown and lockdown like you know i cannot actually like you know take care of the of the generator system there i i would have to probably call so many people so i could not deliver the lecture today if there was no power now fortunately i have a laptop which was fully battery charged so 100% battery charged and then i have an inverter i think it is like you know around 50% charged because we just don't have power since the morning the weather is very hot so the fans are running 
my kids actually like play with the phone so their mobile phones need to be charged if they were not charged right now so they would be around like you know with me and then my my lecture would not happen uh, between them you would had uh, you would hear some uh, noises in the background so this is actually a big problem you know so we are actually trying to work on some systems but the fundamental of that system is going to uh, need is you know power okay so that's why i try to understand this this is something related to power as well so this should be very like you know important subject for you people as well okay so that's that's a good reason that we are discussing it today so then iot right so we 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 discuss what is scada we discussed actually what was wireless sensor network we discussed some aspects of like you know uh, you know uh, geographical uh, navigation satellite system or uh, you know uh, gnss uh, the one which is in india we call it as navic and then now we are moving to the to the term called as iot internet of things okay now internet is the keyword and things is another keyword internet is the mother technology and things is it can be anything like you know it can be any vastu i i told like a fridge is a thing a phone is a thing and in the world there are billions of things there are billions like you know we are how many people right now in the in the globe we are in billions so at least one person has one thing so we have billions of things if one person has more than one thing then we have still billions of things maybe we might go in the trillions of things so all of these we are talking about all of these things connected to each other network to each other you know exchanging information between each other it can be a industrial thing it can be a domestic thing it can be a commercial thing all of that and it is going to communicate with each other using the internet that's why we call it as internet of things now this is the this is this was a new term but initial if you go back the iot concept was coined by a member of radio frequency identification development community in 1999 okay personally i worked on one technology in canada in year 2009 that time also i was not too much aware about iot but whatever i did was related to iot and i'm going to actually kind of try to illustrate to you tomorrow okay but this iot thing started to get more popular after year 2000 uh, uh, 10 and onwards like in especially in uh, uh, asia asian countries and it has recently become more relevant to the practical world largely because of the growth of mobile devices for example apple released their uh, smartphone which was iphone I remember I bought the first iPhone like you know iPhone 3S I waited in a queue for 4 hours in Montreal Canada that was in the winter almost like you know the winter season because it was called iPhone from Apple it was looking so nice and I wanted to be the first one to have it so I got my first Apple iPhone and then I got actually I got upset because the batteries were not good I was charging my phone and using it through Wi-Fi for 2 3 hours and then again my phone battery used to die and then put it on charging so on one side I was using my phone and on one side I was using my computer and my laptop and then I was actually trying to jiggle with everything and I was you know so but this mobile Apple phone had a very good camera like you know you took a picture even I have a lot of pictures taken from my iPhone but they were of a very good quality the battery was worse but the cab the, the the phones were very good so this iot and all of this thing actually widely like you know uh, spread because especially because of the smartphone because of the growth in embedded and uh, ubiquitous communication and you know cloud computing and data analytics okay so this is actually like you know uh, when i was talking about the scada like you know between years 2000 and 2020 so this these were the two most important actually technologies which is called the cloud computing and the data analytics so because of that right now scada also uses that okay scada the industrial scada also makes use of the same technology okay cloud computing and data analytics but in the commercial or in the domestic area also it has been used i will show that tomorrow as well so internet of things is an internet of three things people to people but we don't want to actually like you know for for example facebook whatsapp we communicate with each other through the phone right or we talk to someone using a phone but we we go with a you know with the internet voice over internet protocol so that is actually pe people to people with internet of things okay now if you are using the normal phone to call someone then that is not internet of thing because it doesn't use the line of internet for the communication it uses some other line 
right so if it is using internet then it is internet of thing means it is using the internet protocols it is going to make use of the securities that are actually related to the internet that is internet of things if it is not internet then it is not internet of things it is something else of things okay that you you try to there is actually future internet okay so future future internet what is future internet that will be future internet of things okay so people do machines you know people do machine or things like in industry like you know if someone um, is actually uh, running a process and if he wants to know the temperature and pressure because he's traveling so machine to things things to things things to machines you know as i mentioned one fridge from my house is interacting with another fridge from someone ha someone's house but it is also interacting with the lock which is on the door to keep uh, the grocery delivery uh, person actually like you know inform that we are in home or not so all of that so that is you know collectively it is called as internet of things again as i'm mentioning there are billions of devices billions of devices so they can be smart ones and they can be connected with each other using this internet of things technology right so i will show you a very short video i hope it actually works let me see yes by now you, you may, may have heard, heard the term internet, internet, internet of things, things. Sounds, sounds interesting, interesting. but what, what does the internet of things actually mean, mean? IoT is an evolution of mobile, home, and embedded applications that are being connected to the internet, integrating greater compute capabilities, and using data analytics to extract meaningful information. Billions of devices will be connected to the internet, and soon, hundreds of billions of devices. As related devices connect with each other, they can become an intelligent system of systems. And when these intelligent devices and systems of systems share data over the cloud and analyze it, they can transform our businesses, our lives, and our world in countless ways. Whether it's improving medical outcomes, creating better products faster with lower development costs, making shopping more enjoyable, or optimizing energy generation and consumption. Here's an example of the big picture. Imagine an intelligent device such as a smart traffic camera. The camera can monitor the road for congestion, accidents, and weather conditions, and communicate that status to a gateway that combines it with data from other cameras, creating an intelligent citywide traffic system. Now, imagine that intelligent traffic system connected to other citywide transportation systems, which get data from their own intelligent devices, creating an ever larger intelligent system of systems. The really big possibilities come from analyzing the end-to-end -end data across that system of systems. For example, let's say the city's intelligent traffic system detects massive congestion due to an accident. That insight can be sent to the citywide transportation system, which can analyze the accident's impact on other city systems. Recognizing the accident is near the airport and two city schools, it can notify those systems so they can adjust flight and school schedules. It can also analyze and derive optimal routes around the accident and send those instructions to the city's digital signage system to guide drivers around the accident. And that's just one example of the potential benefits that can happen when intelligent devices share insight with other systems, forming ever-expanding systems of systems. But how do we get there? Regardless of the solution, Intel processors are designed to help you get to market faster and easier. You can scale solutions across a variety of performance, power, and price points with a single set of application code that runs on every Intel processor. So what will you develop to help drive and accelerate the Internet of Things? We'd love to help, so please contact your local Intel representative or visit us on the web at www.intel.com slash IoT to find out more. So that was that was a short video uh, and I think it explained uh, almost everything which I wanted to mention here. And uh, so again I'm mentioning I'm trying to make you realize that each and everything will need power and that power can be in any form right so for example battery there are different technologies in batteries maybe the one that is very interesting is lithium uh, lithium ion phosphate uh, you know uh, which is uh, probably uh, like you know the most demanding one eventually maybe it might go to the hydrogen fuel uh, maybe microfluidic fluid cell 
maybe micro bacteria fluid cell like, you know there are many sources of energy and there are many sources of renewable energy because we are we also need to take care of the environment and we need to actually uh, re um, uh, reduce our consumption of fossil fossil fuels and uh, so again all of these are going to need power right and power is the most important thing and you people like or we people me too also are part of that we can actually do a lot of work on that aspect right so this is this is something interesting as well apart from the applications there might be a wide applications of iot in electrical engineering itself you know in industry or in you know power industry power uh, manufacturing industry power plant industry or in any kind of you know industry uh, for automation because our topic is related to automation so scada iot again is a part of automation as well so the enabling technology so we have like around only like you know 10 minutes remaining okay in 10 minutes i will try to wrap up with the internet of things the communication is extended by internet to all things that surround us okay this internet is the most important keyword which is used for communication the internet of things is much more than machine to machine communication wireless sensor network sensor network 2g 3g 4g now 5g gsm gprs rfid wi-fi gps uh, Navic in India, microcontroller, microprocessor, etc. These are considered as being the enabling technologies that make Internet of Things applications possible. Okay, so uh, the Internet of Things is not a single technology, but it is a mixture of different hardware and software. The Internet of Things provides solution based on the integration of information technology. Again, we have to go on information technology. So in the SCADAs, you know, the last uh, uh year actually history i was last year means the last 20 years history i was mentioning that scada now depend more on the information technology protocols okay the standards of the information technology so that actually has to be like you know understood and uh, you know which refers to hardware and software used to store retrieve process data and communication technology which includes electronic systems used for communication between individuals or groups okay there are heterogeneous mix of communication technologies which need to be adopted in order to address the need of iot applications such as energy efficiency speed security and reliability in this context it is possible that the level of diversity will be scaled to number of manageable connectivity technologies that address the needs of iot applications are adopted by the market so example of standards in these categories include wired and wireless technologies like ethernet wi-fi bluetooth zigbee gsm and gprs so all of these are like you know combined and then you know these are so these are going to be like as i sh uh, showed you in the wsn slide so there is a satellite, there is a cellular network, there is the internet and then there is this actually like wireless sensor network, like the sensing node. So all of them are actually going to be connected with each other and there will be hundreds of billions of devices, right? Because it is going to be the systems of systems. So it is just not one system. Systems of systems are connected, interconnected. Uh, which can be uh, adapted eventually right so internet of things the keywords are listed in this figure i don't want to go in through much detail so internet of things means you know it should be cost effective it should use sensor network it will actually have embedded systems it should take care of the security and privacy it should have a software it should have a data signal processing system it should be able to communicate it should be able to interoperability it should uh, use cloud computing it should actually ha use the network technology it should have an identification it, it will use the future net internet the network management data management protocol standards in system integration nano electronics hardware discovery services semiconductor electronics right so then the fundamentals of a uh, characteristics of iot like you know uh, it's too much of text and i don't have much time but let me just it should be interconnectivity uh, it should actually provide things related services it should take care of heterogeneity it should have a dynamic uh, it should respond to dy dynamic changes uh, it will have an enormous scale it should it should actually have a safety uh, factor and it should always have you know uh, accessibility and compatibility in terms of the connectivity so all of these are actually very essential in terms of iot the architecture of iot is made up of four different layers the layer starts from the bottom to the top and so the layer bottom one is a smart device sensor layer so in in the scada diagram the field processor so instead of the field processor the sensor the process and the field processor together they can be called as a smart device or the sensor layer the lowest layer is made up of smart objects integrated with sensors 
the sensors enable the interconnection of physical and digital worlds allowing real time information to be collected and processed gateways and networks you know so after that you know to connect with the internet it will use the gateway or to connect within the sensor network it will use some other like you know wireless sensor network so massive volume of data will be produced by these tiny sensors and this requires a robust and high performance wired or wireless network infrastructure as a transport medium like for example the cellular network if we go like you know manja kada range nahi hai बरस लोकानकड़ अरेंज नहीं है वी आर ऑल टेकिंग ऑनलाइन लेक्चर्स हाउ मेनी स्टूडेंट्स एक्चुअली सिट फॉर आर क्लासेस देर आर एक्चुअली स्टूडेंट्स हु आर सेवेंटी एंड एटी इन ईच क्लास बट ओनली फोर्टीन टू फिफ्टीन और ट्वेंटी आर ओनली सिटिंग फॉर द लेक्चर वाय दे आर सिटिंग देर ऑलवेज कंप्लेन सर नेटवर्क नहीं है सर मी जिथे रहते हैं तिथे मज कवरेज नहीं है मैं घर बाहर पड़ाव लगते कोरोना मु मैं जाऊ शक नहीं सो यू नो डेटा हाई खूब डेटा जनरेट वहाँ लगला है पन एक्चुअली लाइक यू नो नेटवर्क गेटवे अपना नेटवर्क एक्चुअली अजू नहीं है तेवड़ कवरेज नहीं है लाइक यू नो सो द इन्फ्रास्ट्रक्चर दैट हैज टू बी एक्चुअली डेवलप्ड यू नो इवन फॉर वायर्ड एंड वायरलेस नेटवर्क इन्फ्रास्ट्रक्चर एज अ ट्रांसपोर्टेशन मीडियम देन द मैनेजमेंट सर्विस द मैनेजमेंट सर्विस रेंडर द प्रोसेसिंग you know so that the data analytics for example once the data goes to the cloud you know how that data can be managed like you know do you want to run some data analytics uh, do you want to actually do some process do you want to actually do some management of the data so there are devices that are uh, in terms of hardware and software that will take care of this and then the application layer the iot application covers like you know from agriculture for example agriculture right now is the uh, even in the corona covid situation agriculture industry was the the most robust one which got less affected so this agriculture like you know me myself i am into precision agriculture i have one patent uh, us patent in the area of agriculture and i did a lot of work on iot related to agriculture right now i'm working on one project sponsored by a canadian uh, company and uh, that is in the area of agriculture and we are doing a lot of things in iot so agriculture factory supply chain emergency healthcare user interaction culture and tourism environment energy all of these different domains are going to actually use uh, uh, iot and they have their own specific applications so this application layer is also important for iot so this is the diagram you know from bottom to the top the smart uh, device sensor device the network communication link the service support and application support layer application layer so in terms of my expertise me i am an instrumentation engineer and i am very i am proud i am very proud to say that i am very good in this smart sensor device sensor layer you know the field devices uh, i did a lot of work in wifi gsm gprs uh uh Uh, microcontrollers embedded system so to and networking i did some so i'm kind of you know 50 50% good there uh, then in terms of service support uh, i am good in data analytics i did a lot of work in data analytics data mining uh, machine learning uh, artificial intelligence and all those things which actually kind of fit in this layer and application layers are like you know building the applications you know the front end and taking care of the back end so you know you can have an application which can be a web based or you can have an application which is on your smartphone uh, like a stand alone like you know as a app or it can be like a stand alone on a machine so there can be two types of application usually the web, web applications are the one which are getting more and more popular so i have actually as i said i i'm good at python programming i'm good at actually c sharp i did java i'm good in matlab i was super good in matlab and then in terms of scada and in terms of actually like you know this uh, automation i i was more or less working with labview so when we talk about plc dcs so those instead of those we can also depend on ni national instrument products uh, so their software is labview and then their hardware is are actually ni uh, you know data acquisition uh, systems they actually have different configurations and i've used many of them and i will try to show you that in terms of scada as well tomorrow right so scada without plc like you know automation without plc but still actually like you know that can be something with an industrial standard so that can go with Na labview national instruments so I, i i'm good i'm super good on that okay so eventually i can also demo those things so then internet of things io functional view i don't i don't i don't want to go through this so while iot is architect into layers the technologies have been categorized into three groups the first group is you know the technologies impact the devices like microprocessor chips so we need to have low power sensors to power and sustainability so these are something like you know the problems and you know the solutions are actually expected intelligence of sensors in the field miniaturization of the chipsets wireless sensor network for sensor connectivity the second group con connects uh, you know with the network so network sharing technologies 
network technologies that address capacity latency like you know because if i'm sending some signal now and if it is going to reach after 10 minutes after my process is going to get over then there is no use like let's say i'm taking a lecture my lecture is over and then someone is trying to attend my lecture sir uh links out sir link mail ka hai sir lecture zhala ka hai ka upyog actually tumhi ata tumhi ata connect kela hai ka upay maza zhala magashi lecture right so there is no use so latency you know latency is very important in uh, in this iot field even in uh, basically all kind of instrumentation and automation third group impacts the management services that support the iot applications like you know intelligent decision making technologies such as context aware computing services predictive analysis complex event processing and behavioral an analytics speed of data processing technologies such as memory and streaming analytics so if if everything is live like let's say if you go with google uh, right now google meet then you know these actually technologies are sluggish but if you go with right now the technology that we are using you know uh, for this uh, net meeting actually it is a good one if you go with zoom it is a good one right so compared to google meet google it google meet always has some problems you know like that's that's what my experience is so that is actually the third group you know for iot right now we are also working on iot we are going through iot people for people through people to people through actually internet right now so this is actually an application that we are already like you know right now in live right so internet of thing has wide applications we have already seen that video smart energy smart cities smart health smart living smart industry animal tracking smart agriculture smart homes smart transport and many more okay so i would like to acknowledge like you know my principal sir dr uh, dinkar uh, vishnu ghevde i think he's a former uh, you know faculty from kit uh, he's very well known with the faculties uh, from uh, uh, kit and right now uh, we are blessed to have him our principal in our institute uh our our institute is a private one and uh, i would actually acknowledge my trustee mr amit dada patil and the institute chairman vishal dada patil so thanks to them because of them i'm actually like you know able to deliver this lecture i'm the uh, r&d cell in charge for pvpit and i have many other positions that i'm working with PV, pvpit and i would also like to appreciate or i would like to thank aict department of electrical engineering kit and all organizers and participants sorry i am actually not uh, remembering everyone's names but you know from the uh, super high management administration uh, uh, teaching and non teaching everyone i would like to appreciate and thanks to everyone from your institute from your department and also the members of aict for their financial support to actually uh, run such actually sessions i would also like to thank uh, i would also like to thank uh, uh you know the people who were uh, uh you know behind the curtains for actually running this uh, session uh if i have not actually uh, known them or if i have known them so thank thank you to you to all of you too and with that probably i would like to stop my session i'm just going to stop with another video okay please try to watch that video and then we can we can we can still wait we can uh, go for a question answer session if you want or we can meet tomorrow okay so don't forget that we belong to the soils of this nation where many of us historically believed in the super divine blessings okay manje apan sage engineers aslo kiwa kay pan aslo tari pan science science madle scientist jari aslo tari aplya palikada pan ek power hai ani tacha actually aplyala aplyala actually blessing milale shiwa apan kay karu shakat nahi so stay blessed with concentrating and meditating on the super divine with faith to succeed even more for example me i believe in meditation and concentration but i don't do anything beyond reading books or listening to audio or video content or during attending lectures and webinars so if we are concentratedly listening watching something that someone is actually sharing and it is if it is informational we will definitely gain knowledge and succeed more so if we are capable to concentrate if your students are capable to concentrate when you are actually delivering a lecture then only they will learn and that is kind of a meditation or a concentration that is required and that is what i believe in okay and it should not just be superficial it should come actually really from the deep inside our uh, actually heart right so this is one more video i would like to actually you can try to find the lyrics in english for this video what i understand from this video is like you know you should you should try to work with the inner engineering and just not the surface you know we should not learn to resp resp uh, respond but we should actually like we should not learn to respond but we should uh, we should not learn to re react we should respond right so respond is different than react and to respond you have to be 
very actually like you know uh, experience in that so we all know actually Sadhguru from Isha Foundation he has so many followers across the world okay So that's it actually like you know the first video 4 minutes you can dance and then the last video 4 minutes again you can dance if you do like you know a dance like that for 8 minutes a day uh, maybe sometimes in, uh, you know twice a day or thrice a day then the health can be perfectly like you know controlled even then even in this uh, lockdown so that is also a message uh, you know uh, which are which are very simple actually dances right and the music is very very actually like you know catchy so with that music everyone will dance and it is very uh, it is very actually like you know uh, fascinating for me like you know for the number of followers actually that these people actually have across the globe and it's it's not actually a joke to actually have those many followers uh, who are gathering for uh, you know li for listening uh, or gaining some knowledge from these people right so that is actually another essence so me maybe I'm very uh, you know uh, very uh, tiny particle uh, uh, with knowledge that I have there is a big ocean and everyone are actually like you know having their own share in the knowledge of ocean and thanks for uh, giving me the chance to share the knowledge and uh, we'll probably meet again uh, tomorrow I think my session is at uh, 10 o'clock right 10 10 30 10 10 10 or 10 30 and I will show you some yeah, yeah 10 o'clock I will show I will share share with you some applications in different uh, I will try to share in form of videos and also like you know I can uh, talk in terms of explaining the videos so that I can do for tomorrow so if you have any questions so uh, about the like you know the answer for the first question 
so matt actually like you know uh, visited 71 locations comprising 55 countries and out of that in us itself it was actually 11 states okay so in us he visited 11 states 55 countries he also visited india twice okay one was the video when he started in mumbai itself and the other video he visited uh, gurgaon okay the uh, place where is uh, new delhi and in terms of this video actually if you try to actually see the uh, translation so the uh, translation is like you know the mind runs in the search of happiness and uh, you know without understanding the nature of life your desire is just a small fish but it grows into a whale and even after you catch a whale you still also want a small fish the wind blows the boat rocks on the top the waves of desire the heart beats the life happens because the waves of the desire the waves are only the surface of the sea deep inside the fishes are free the desires are only the surface of the mind deep inside there is lot of dance of ecstasy when you realize this you will be blissful and all the waves will uh, will be waves of bliss okay so if you have seen this video good if you didn't see it then you know so if you have seen money power health wealth uh, pleasure you have tasted everything in your life and you have realized that nothing is going to work in real uh, uh sense then fulfill you ultimately that is uh, time for yoga okay so yoga you can do in any form like you know you can dance and you can do yoga uh, you can actually like you know concentrate on learning something listening something that also it can be actually done in yoga and that is actually the uh, philosophy that i believe in and that's it that's all so if you have any questions let me know maybe you can also let me know tomorrow i think we are uh, already like you know uh, out of so much time so thank you everyone thank you dr nandukeshwar dawale sir this is a wonderful session so you are given the kind of inputs to the participants so what they can do in the, the their um, uh, teaching and how they can involve uh, the with iot in this is part of as well as this new one how to how to uh, um, um, Happy, uh, happy uh, in uh, this pandemic situation. So, two nice videos you have shared with the participants, so and so we are uh, happy to see this, and we'll follow every day to create a happiness in others also. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome, sir. Yeah. My name, madam, or any. उटलोकलोटोटो So a very good session uh, that we all had today, and actually we are in fourth industrial revolution. Uh, these topics are very important actually to learn, and sir, you made it very simple. So, uh, and I must not forget about the way that you have started the session, sir. I mean, uh, motivating to all, all of us, uh, wearing about the, uh, I mean, yoga and other uh, things. So thank you so much. It's a wonderful session. So I am Miss Sonali on behalf of uh, Electrical Department of KIT College. Would like to thank you. Uh, so thank you so much for being with us and your time. And we'll be looking for your guidance further. So uh, this session has concluded over here. And I hope everything has been. Uh, sir has dealt with a lot of content actually, and it was very nice. So I request all the participants to stay tomorrow also with us. And thanks, sir. Uh, thank you so much, sir, once again. And I request to all participants to kindly fill the feedback feedback as well. And exactly joined in at ten am ten am ten am tomorrow, sir. Yes, yes, yes madam. Thank you. All the participants fill the feedback and attend us. Uh, the the session, session will ending within after, after five minutes. minutes. Okay. So all are requested to do it. Yes, and I would also have a like a request. Uh, so, in terms of feedback, uh, if you can also share the feedback with me, I mean uh, the organizers, like this, the feedback of today's session. 
irrespective if it is good or bad it doesn't matter but because feedback is always a good uh, mechanism to correct ourselves and we are in control systems right so without feedback we cannot control so we cannot improve so if you can share the feedback with me also that would be a great actually uh, uh, thanks uh, or appreciate i would appreciate you yes yes, sir. yes. Sure. 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 Yeah. okay thank you thank, thank you sir see you tomorrow morning bye Bye. You're welcome. Bye.